All right, two more sessions to go. Uh, as a reminder, if you're looking, uh, if you had initially thought this is going to be the platform engineering session with the operator, uh, I mentioned this many times, or several times before, we had to switch it because the speaker unfortunately couldn't make it, but thankfully we had Thomas to jump in. Uh, Thomas, it's actually your second time speaking. To, uh, yesterday you had a talk? Yes. And today? Yes. Maybe we'll give you a prize for the speaker with the most airtime. <laughs> yeah. I'm, uh, jokes don't get The better. golden mic. Yeah, the golden <laughs> mic, exactly. Um, so, Thomas, uh, just a, a reminder for everyone, you are CNCF ambassador. Um, yes, I am. One of four that we have in Austria, and you just reminded me that you, once you are a CNC, NC, uh, an ambassador, uh, we have a, I think it's an, a year or a year and a half how long it's valid. I think a year. A year, yeah. And so we need to reapply. We also need to, by the way, as a CNCF ambassador, you need to uh, approve every month now where we have uh, surveys on what we've actually contributed. So we cannot just sign up for it and then do nothing. Uh, we have to show what type of conferences we do, what type of uh, uh, contributions we do. Um, in your case, we'll hear a lot about uh, Kate's GPT. That's obviously a great way to contribute back to the community. Uh, another thing for you is you are a co-chair at the CNCF app delivery. Yes. Sik, can you quickly say what is this special interest group all about? Yes, so uh, um, technical, technical advisory groups in the CNCF are there to drive special topics forward. So the take app delivery itself is responsible for everything related to app delivery. What we are doing is we are creating white papers such as the platform white paper, the operator white paper and so on. Cool. and also um, talk to projects to and improve um, their community life. Mm -hmm. the, the topic of uh, pipeline transparency, pipeline observability came up several times today when we talked about app delivery. I guess this is also a big topic on how do we, actu how do we actually make uh, delivery more observable. I guess this is also something that happens in, in your group. Sometimes so. We also have the project captain in there yeah. and um, that's also a topic which falls into this. Mm -hmm. Two more quick facts. You are teaching, and I think you mentioned this in your talk, at the FH, at the Fachhochschule Hagenberg. Burgenland. Ah, Burgenland, not Hagenberg. Burgenberg. Ha Hagenberg is a bit far away. I know, I know. But it actually says Burgenland, but I'm not sure why I read uh, Hagenberg. I guess it's close to my home. Uh, and then you also have uh, the second chance for KCD CFPs coming up. We mentioned this yesterday. If you have uh, submitted a talk, but it was rejected, there's a second chance, and maybe you have another slide in there or... Uh, I've stolen your slide. You've stolen my slide, you can reuse it. You okay. can still scan it, so. Yeah. But now, Thomas, uh, solving Kubernetes mysteries with Kate's GPT, the floor is yours. Yes, so thank you. Um, so, um, whom of you has ever seen a talk from me about Kate's GPT? That's good. So, it's all, everything new for you. Um, perfect for me. Um, the next thing, um, whom of you ever used ChatGPT? So many people. Um, whom of you used ChatGPT to solve Kubernetes problems? Also many things. And how many succeeded? The hands get, 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 get less. So um, what I will talk today is about a project we started with the, uh, when the whole ChatGPT hype came up. Um, for solving Kubernetes problems, and you find out, you will find out that the GPT in Kate's GPT is only there to make the title a bit more fancy. Um, and yes, so let's start. Um, the first thing, um, some some months ago, I think in March, um, the founder of Kate's GPT came to me and asked me if I want to contribute to this to this project. And yes, after some time or after, I think, five minutes or, or such. I said, yes, it's a good idea. And um, some may ask, why should someone contribute to open source project without any um, financial things and so on? So the first uh, motivation for me was, um, what you see here is a concert. I think it's about 20 years ago. Um, and I could not um, attend because I had to troubleshoot. Um, the second thing here is a party. I think it's also about 20, 25 years ag uh, ago. 
and let's say 20. <laughs> um, and I also could not contribute because I had to troubleshoot. And last but not least, um, this is a typical Austrian thing, um, so a Wiener Schnitzel. And sometimes on Sundays, this got cold because my pager um, rang and I had to troubleshoot. So it was a really obvious thing for me to say, yes, I want, he want to help people troubleshooting and um, keep their schnitzels warm on Sunday um, with, um, by helping them troubleshooting their Kubernetes issues. So um, what you will hear today is are some things about what could go wrong in Kubernetes. And I can tell you, this is a lot. Um, the second thing is why I or we think that human knowledge and AI are perfect fit to fix Kubernetes issues. Um, the th third thing and the second dem demonstration I will do is about how to fix Kubernetes issues with Kate's GPT. And last but not least, I will also, um, I will also show you how Kate's GPT could be your 24-7 SRE, someone in the future. Um, between the lines, you will see my most favorite application and also some nice new demos I will do using um, Trivi and a bit security things. Okay, so let's start with the first demo and my favorite app. Whom of you knows this app? Perfect. So don't tell the other people what this is. Um, at the first, this is a, a, micro, a typical microservice application consisting of one front-end service, five back-end services, one config map. Um, short spoiler, the config map has nothing to do with the troubleshooting thing. And um, the first thing I will do now is I will simply deploy this. So I have a typical manifest. Um, and what you see here is now how the, how, the, uh, how the application is called. So this is the potato head for those, for those who didn't know it. And um, there is nothing magic in there. So there are services, there are deployments, namespaces, and whatever. And the first thing I will do now is I will apply this. Sometimes it takes a bit longer. And um, now my application got deployed. So I have, I think, about around um, five deployments, five services, um, a namespace, and so on. And the first thing I want to do when, my when I start my application is um, I want to I try to access it. And the first thing I see here is that it cannot be reached. So um, I think when you are, you are developing Kubernetes and you deploy your manifest the first time, um, this is where your nightmare begins. So um, let's, let's start troubleshooting all of these things. The first thing I will do is I will try to find out which pods are running there. Um, at the first at the first side, and um, some of you might might already notice what happened there, but at the first side, everything looks pretty nice. So I have all of my pods running. Um, and what what could go wrong? Um, the second thing I will do now. Um, I will try to find out um, how my how my deployments look like in this case. Um, and what I, what I see here, and this was a problem I found very often when I had many services, um, I, find, I see that there are not only five pods, but six. So I have a sixth deployment here where no pod is there. And um, if you don't know Kubernetes very well, um, you might troubleshoot there for hours. Because when you take a look at this deployment, so let's do a simple de um, describe deployment. Um, so this is a live demo. Um, 
it seems like everything is okay. So the deployment controller says you scaled up your replica set, potato head, front end, and so on, Q1. And you don't see any error. The main problem in this case, and to be honest, I had to try, um, I troubleshooted such an issue around two or three times because people don't learn. And um, it always took me around one hour to find out that between a deployment and a pod is also a replica set. <laughs> so um, when we take a look at KGET events, we um, also see some things, but um, we should also see somewhere that um, this does not work because a service account is missing. Um, what we see in the upper in the upper thing here. So the fir what we see here is that a service account potato kubectl potato head is missing. So let's create the service account. And um, how is this called? Potato. Ah. And as I said before, this is still a live demo. Last week I did the same thing and some people told me um, I could type a bit more precise. Um, okay, so now we have a service account here. And now, let's wait a bit. After some time, um, we should get the new pod, hopefully. So um, just to um, shorten the time a bit. Whom of you ever so uh, have uh, ever looked for such a problem? Okay, and how long did you t did it take you to solve this? <laughs> he delegated it to me. So perfect. Um, and it took me two hours. Um, for some reason, this takes a bit longer today. So one thing I always tell the people when my demos take a bit longer, um, is believe me, it worked around one hour ago. Um, so let's remove this if it works. It should work. Um, let's simply reapply it. <laughs> this is not the Internet access, this is my cluster. Um, hopefully now everything works. Perfect, so my six pod get all, uh, gets also created, so it was definitely a service account issue, believe me. Um, <laughs> um, so after some time, this pod should also come up. Perfect, and now you will f the f see the first time um, parts of my favorite application. So good afternoon. And um, what you see here with the potato head is every body part of the potato head is one microservice. So we have one service for the body, we have one for, one, for the, one for the head, one for the left hand, one for the, for the right hand, and so on. But today, the potato head is missing his right leg. And um, this is also because one of the microservices is not reachable. And there we come to the second problem in, this, in, this, in all of this. Um, in the whole demo. And what you saw here is all of my pods are running. I have all of my services running. Hopefully. And this was also for some time when I started with Kubernetes. This was also one, one thing where I think I had lots of time to, to troubleshoot. Um, to keep this a bit shorter now, 
Um, I will solve this a bit quicker. And if we take a look on this service now, we have somewhere a service. This is the right leg, hopefully. Um, which has the wrong selector. So um, in my case, um, the selector of the, of the pod would be potato head, right leg, not right legs. So a typical typo thing. Um, in some cases, I think it also took me half an hour to an hour to find such things. And I think many of you experience the same thing. And if I apply this, um, if I fix this and apply this again, um, also, this one should be there now. Perfect. So we have a complete potato head now. Um, so you see, I think it took around 10 minutes now to troubleshoot very simple issues. And um, what we learned here is that troubleshooting Kubernetes can be really cumbersome. So um, you're troubleshooting things which are very simple. Um, everyone should think about it. And every time I found out my problems, I wanted to um, put my head, head against the wall. Um, the second time, as I, saw, as I told you before, we are always troubleshooting the same issues. So as I said, you, as I said the first thing with the service accounts, I fixed it, I fixed it once. I think two months ago, I forgot about this, fixed it twice and so on. And hopefully I will not do this too often again. <laughs> um, the third thing, and this is the good thing, um, in fact, we are able to de detect the problems. And uh, another thing is we are often definitely not the first who had this problem. So um, with the power of many other people, we could fix these things. So last but not least, and I see there are many observability people, there are no new things here. Why not automate the detection and problem, so and problem solving pro uh, process for this? And this is where Kate's GPT started. So um, Kate's GPT, I think it started in March and it has a very um, fast evolution behind it, behind it, be, um, behind it. So, as you see here, we are, I think, around half a year uh, old, and the, pro um, the pro uh, project already has the third logo. So, um, a good sign of evolution. Um, funny thing is, um, you might see somewhere the colorful logo in the mid. Um, this is, the, I think, the only logo where stickers e e exist. And one day after, after I ordered the stickers, we changed the logo. So um, at the, in the meanwhile, we decided that the logo will stay, the, um, that both logos are valid. Um, what you also see here is the amount of GitHub stars of the project. And it was very nice to see that a project which didn't even exist get, got so much um got so much response before we released it the first time. And when we released the project, um, one, um, I think one day before, we, ta um, we talked and said um, it might go well or we might ach have it. Um, the nice thing in this part is it went re really well in the first days. I think we had around so ta um, thousand stars after a day and um, it grows continuously at the moment. Um, so, what is Kate's GPT? In the beginning, it was a very, really simple CLI. So, the only thing you could do was to do a Kate's GPT analyze. There were some analyzers, and these are written by hand. So, these are only things which analyze um, specific objects in the Kubernetes cluster and try to find out misbehavior. Um, then, the analyzers ask um, query Kubernetes and try to find out if there are any misbehaviors. And in the end, um, and this was, I think, the point where I started in the project, Kate GPT told you that you have a problem. And um, this was also the thing um, why I said in the beginning, um, 
to this, until this point, there is no AI involved. This is only um, human knowledge. And the only um, former SREs or SREs who know how to find problems. Um, later, so I think on the second or third day, we added some AI integration, um, which was able to query OpenAI. Um, open and then KCGPT could, could tell you, you have a problem, and this is the solution for it. And for all those who are thinking this is magic or rocket science or whatever, um, I'm no AI specialist. I'm also not a programmer. <laughs> but um, the AI code was so simple that even I could understand it because there were three lines. And one of these lines um, was the prompt, which simply called, uh, said, please give me a solution for this problem. And um, this worked pretty well in the beginning. And this is also a thing which works until now. And this is also a thing I wanted to show you now. So we have, um, I will deploy the same application as before again. Making it. I think I should automate this at some point in time. Um. I think I did this already, but let's apply it again. So this is the same thing as I deployed at the as I had deployed at the start of the uh, of the talk. And now, after I installed KidsGPT before, the only thing I have to do now is KidsGPT and analyze. And I see some problems. So. Until now, there is really no AI involved. This is all, um, only only code. I see that a uh, deployment has one replica, but none is av available. I see that a service account is missing. I see that two services have no endpoint. Um, so um, I think this would, ha would have helped me a lot while my troubleshooting session. The second thing I can do is I can explain everything. And with the explain thing, um, this asks OpenAI and gives me a solution for the problems. And um, I think this could also help some people finding their problems and so on. Um, so um, with this, I would have solved the problems I fixed before in 10 minutes, I think in around two. Um, the third demonstration, and um, I heard I get really short on time, um, will be would be how to get kids chip GPT as a 24/7 SRE, and the next thing we did when we created JP, J, um, op, um, kids GPT was we created an operator for it to query kids GPT and to write the results in a in a custom resource definition in Kubernetes, but which may also makes it possible to query webhooks afterwards. So. Um, you could get problems in your Kubernetes cluster almost in real time um, to a Slack channel or whatever, um, which could also help you solving such problems. Um, good. So, um, KSGPD wouldn't exist without the help of many people. I think some of them are sitting in the room here. And um, especially in the beginning of KidsGPT, we spent lots of time um, making the code a bit prettier, writing analyzers, finding problems which we could solve, and so on. And this would not be possible without people at the moment. Um, so at the moment, I think there are 43 or whatever. Um, and if you find some problems which you, want, um, which you think this could be cool in, in KidsGPT or whatever, you could be the next. So we are a very open project. We're always happy about new contributors. We're always open for new, new features and so on. OK, so um, hopefully um, this project is interesting for you. So how can you get in contact with us? So I'm still here. So let's talk. You can also find me at the Wizards booth. And um, 
Yes, um, I'm also very happy about feedback about the project. The next thing, contributions are always welcome. So take a look on the projects, take a look on issues, create pull requests, um, do whatever needed, and um, we will be very happy to accept them. We also have an own Slack channel and our own Slack workspace, and therefore you could also get in contact with us here. Um, so some, t some takeaways from this talk. Finding simple issues in Kubernetes can get really hard, as we saw in the beginning. The second thing, two magic words in case GPT can save you hours of troubleshooting. So case GPT and analyze. The third thing, the project is steadily growing, so we like to hear from you. Um, one other thing, and this, there I will come to an end of this talk. Um, as, as Andy told before, we will do a, so um, I, as, um, I and we as Cloud Native Austria will do a second edition of, Cloud, um, will do a, will give um, talks of, K, of KCT a second chance. So um, there will be a meetup on October the 19th. And if you have some sec session which got rejected, um, please scan this QR code, hand it in there, and hopefully we will see us there. If you don't have a talk, um, I hope also to see you there. Uh, so in any way, I hope to see you there. <laughs> um, if you have feedback about this talk, um, this is the next, next nice QR code. So um, if you say the speaker was a bit nervous, um, if you want to tell me that the speaker was a bit nervous, this is the perfect way. Um, and yes, with this, I uh, thank you for your attention and I'm open for questions now. Very cool. And I actually earlier, I wasn't joking when I said uh, I delegated it to you because we used to work together mm -hmm. in the same project and I know I learned a lot. When I started with Kubernetes, I had NFC, no fucking clue about these things and I struggled a lot. Uh, one quick question. Um, so the way the contributions really, where you get the most impact is by extending the analyzer. At the moment, by extending the analyzers, work, in the pro uh, work on the operator itself, because this is a thing where we think that this could be the way to go in the future, I think. Already some platforms integrated this in, the, in their things. Mm -hmm. um, and this could help automate such things. So we are also thinking about creating automatic GitHub issues when we find some problems. Mm -hmm. We are also thinking about creating pull requests if we find something. The problem is how to link the objects to a repository and to, to its files. Mm -hmm. But there uh, is many potential to work on this. Cool. All right, uh, questions, yes. Hello, um, actually I have two questions. Um, first of all, how fast is ChatGPT um, evolving for say new Kubernetes versions and special problems for um, new stuff? This is a thing I cannot answer at the moment <laughs> um, because the problems I've s looked for and found until now were pretty pretty simple to find, I think, and they did not meet, uh, need some, some special things. Okay, and the second question, um, are you open API compatible and I can use my own um, large language model um, with my local API or is it like hard coded to use open API? No, uh, um, we, I think we support local AI, open AI, um, Azure AI, or whatever it's, call, it's called, and I think we're also working on BART. Okay, thanks. But, but for the first question again, the AI is really not used to find the problem. It's really just to explain a potential solution. So the, yes. the tough part is still to create an analyzer that, anal that detects a new problem with enough context, obviously, and then you're calling the large language model to yes. get a better human explanation. Um, which language model uh, is it? Uh, is used by default? Um, is it uh, three five from OpenAI or four? Um, and which one is the the best and has the best uh, answers? Um, as I said before, I'm not the best when it comes to AI itself. Um, I know that we are using OpenAI 3.5. Um, I think we're extending this to 4 in the, in the future. And this is everything I can say uh, to, this, to this seriously. 
while I'm getting there, uh, quick question. Why the potato red leg is the left leg? This might be a bug. <laughs> <laughs> or it might be, was this the right leg? It depends on how you look at it. We <laughs> looked at the person from the front, so it was his left leg, but from our perspective, it was the right. Okay. <laughs> One thing that I might have missed, um, how does it interact? What credentials does it use to interact with the Kubernetes API? And then related to that, can it run with a subset of credentials? I mean, it requires access to pods, deployments, replica sets. Can it run a subset of analysis, um, even if it doesn't have access, for instance, to replica sets, or you need all the access to run the tool? Um, you can um, limit. Uh, you can define which analyzers you want to use. So if you are only using one for, I think, um, the horizontal pod autoscaler, you only need access to this and to related objects, obviously. And the second thing for for Kubernetes, it uses the current Kubernetes um, context, or you can also define a cube config or another context. Awesome. Do we have any other questions? Yes. Yes. Um, hey, thanks for quickly jumping in today. It was a great talk and a great tool. Um, from my personal experience, the biggest problem with ChatGPT, and I'm using Creature 5, is that the solutions provided by ChatGPT, so ChatGPT doesn't have any certainty percentage how true their answers are. So no matter if the solution is the correct one or this is complete nonsense, uh, ChatGPT will always tell you, yeah, this is the solution, do that. So do you have any measurements to improve the certainty of solutions provided by this tool? So I think there is something you where you can, um, where I can define how um, how confident ChatGPT should should um, should answer. Um, this is implemented, I think, in the operator. And the second thing, um, there is at the moment nothing implemented to validate this. Um, I talked last week to some guys in a, another conference, and there were there were such things. Uh, so we had some ideas as asking a second AI um, if the solution is is valid, or ask if, ask the same API if it is sure, and so on. But to be honest, there is nothing I can, nothing serious from from my side we c we could do there at the moment. But I think the thing is, right? If you if you take if you don't use a large language model, what do you do? You go on Stack Overflow, you go to other forums, and then the answers that you get back there are also maybe not accurate. I mean, you still need to validate, but this helps you a lot to get something that you would otherwise, where you spend minutes in googling around. And I think that's why. This is, but uh, like getting a feedback, uh, a feedback feature in there would be nice, like this really solved my problem, and then you can rank it up higher. This was also a thing we discussed last week. Um, but uh, as I said in the beginning, the project is still very in a very early phase, and we can always improve. Awesome. With this, we are at the end um, just of this talk. There will be more, but a round of applause again for Thomas. Thank you. We have a fifth, uh, no, actually, yeah, a 15 minute break, and then we have another session in here. And then, so what's the next session? The next session here is going to be a Kubernetes operator story from idea to cloud integration. Uh, that's going to be here in about 13 minutes. See and, you later. And, and I think you should really listen to this if you are really interested in writing operators in Kotlin or in Java. This is very interesting, this talk, I heard it.